Hi, welcome to Creative Ramblings. Last time I talked about my newly found abstract process where I used a direct transfer technique to transfer an image to a panel and use this as an underpainting. So I promised to tell you a little bit more about the direct transfer technique. Uh, the direct transfer is very different from the gel skin transfers that I usually use. The difference between the two is that the gel skins will give you a very clean, pristine transfer, while with the direct transfer, the, the image usually gets damaged while you clean it. Uh, it will break up and it will give the image a little bit more of a weathered feel. So I'll be talking about the gel skins in a little bit more detail in a future vlog, but right now I'd like to focus on the direct transfer. So what happens with this technique is that you transfer your image directly to your surface like this, hence the name direct transfer. Because you're and transferring it like this, face down, that means that the final image is going to be a mirror from your print. So you can do your direct transfer on any surface that is porous. Things like wood and canvas work very well. To create a good transfer, you need a print that is printed with a powder-based ink. Uh, so that would be something like a laser print or a photocopy. And you want it to be on a regular old printing paper. So no fancy photo paper or glossy stuff or nothing like that. Just plain old paper. So what you're going to need is a properly prepared panel. I will do a future video in which I explain how to properly do that and why that is important. You're also going to need your print, of course. And a little bit of water, some cloths, a nice white flat brush, a squeegee and your medium. Now you're going to take some of the medium and you're going to pour it in the middle of the panel. You want to be generous with the medium because if there's no medium there's not going to be a transfer. And you're then going to spread it out and you want to spread it out nice and even. As evenly as po possible so no big blobs because the blobs it's going to dry uneven and it's going to be more difficult to get a nice clear transfer. So nice even strokes like this and then you want to cover the entire panel. Now your next step is going to be to lay your print on top of the surface where you put your medium. Like this. And then you're going to take your squeegee and you can apply a lot of pressure and squeeze out all the excess medium from underneath. You can actually scrape it off and put it back so you can use it again. And you want to make sure that there's no more bubbles. You want to make sure that everywhere on your entire piece the paper is really adhered to your panel. No air bubbles because wherever there's air bubbles again there's going to be no transfer. So now everything is nicely adhered to your panel and now you want to wait. You want to wait between like three to five minutes maybe. Now when you've waited enough time you want to test a corner and when the paper, the top layer of the paper separates from the bottom layer of the paper you're good to go. Sometimes when you're very lucky you can pull it all in one go. But that really depends on, it's like there's a sweet spot. And sometimes you hit it and sometimes you don't. And I think with the lights and everything it's drying a little bit quicker than I'm used to. So you'll just need a little bit more patience this way. As you can see right now, I have separated the paper. There's one layer that's still here and the rest is all over here. So at this point you can wait however long you want. You can clean it immediately or you can wait weeks or months or even years before cleaning it. Actually, the longer you wait, the easier it's going to be to clean. So when cleaning, I like to use a uh, fiber cloth. You want to make your cloth uh, damp but not wet. And then you're going to make it slightly damp like this. And then you're going to use the best tools that you have, your fingers, and you're actually going to rub the excess paper off of your panel. Let the friction of the paper and your fingers do the work. Now some people like to do this with a cloth, but I actually find that then you risk introducing too much water and actually damaging the image way easier. So there you go. It's all clean. 
So like this, you can treat it as any other acrylic layer. You can use it as an underpainting like I'm going to do with this piece, but you can also treat it as a layer of paint and just do little detailing on top or do another transfer on top. That's also possible. It's all up to you. So I hope you're going to have fun with it. I hope you liked this demonstration. If you have any questions or suggestions for future topics, please write them in the comments. And if you are enjoying this vlog, please share and subscribe. And I'll see you in two weeks. Stay creative. Bye.